Good evening everybody, how are you? Welcome, welcome. It's Friday, it's Friday already. Good to see you. Um, I'm still finishing dinner <laughs> because this mum made, mum made fruit salad, so I'm, I'm still on the fruit salad. Um, we decided to, well I had a busy day and I decided we haven't had takeaway for a long time and mum and dad particularly haven't because they live kind of semi-rural, regional, Mornington Peninsula. So I thought we'll get takeaway along with the rest of the population. So um, we've only just finished and we should have finished an hour ago. But there you go. Now, who have I got? Hello, Grandy. How are you this evening? Kerry's here. Robin's here. Hello, hello. And oh, Marie's here. And we have lots of weird and wonderful posts coming up. I don't know who those people are, but welcome, whoever you are. Sylvia, lovely to see you as well. Hello, Bobby. Hello, Ilsa. You're home this evening. That's nice. Deb's here as well. Jan's here. Oh, Marie says, oh, hi, Cindy. How are things in Yeovil this evening? Um, Marie says, fabulous way to finish a very heavy week. It, I tell you what, I'm right behind you there. It was, it was a heavy week. Um, and in fact, I have messed you around big time because I said we were going to do a combo this evening of a few, you know, a few new bits and bobs, bit of a demo, and then we were going to do Benina. But we were supposed to be helping the kidlets out this weekend with moving, with everything, and we've had to change those plans with them. Long story, won't go into it. So we feel like we're back to having the weekend. So I just immediately went, right. Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, Benina, it's on, so we don't miss out. And I, I don't want to go until Tuesday till I see you again. It's a cheesy thing to say, but I don't. Good evening, Sharon. Hello, Yvonne. Hello, Karen. Jenny, it's been so long. Oh, I have to apologize to Jenny and also Michelle Fisher this evening. Hello, Diane. Good to see you. And Yvonne says, hello, everybody. Pam's here. Francis is here. Heavens, you're all here. Christine Davy. Hope you had a lovely visit with family. Yeah, we did, thanks. But, you know, it's really, it's quite strange because it should feel like normal, but we just haven't, we haven't done it for so long. But, Christine, I hope you and everyone else here in Metro Melbourne has managed to catch up with their family and friends today. And if not, this weekend, Diane, do we get to see Mum? Hang on, I'll ask. Mum? Diane wants to see you. <laughs> They're sitting up the other end hiding, Di. Um, Mel, good evening. Uh, good to see you. Lynn, stacks of you here. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it's I know it's a busy time. There's lots on in an evening, so it's nice that we could catch up. Janet's here. Oh, Janet, good morning in the UK to you. Jenny Peach, Kieran, oh, everyone's here. So, oh, yeah, this works much better, doesn't it? What is it? It's... um. It's Natasha Makes Time if it was earlier in the week. So it is 10 a.m. in the morning on a Friday with you, which is really lovely. Shall I put this down before my arm drops off? Because I'm standing here holding it. I really, really want to put it in my mouth, but I'm not going to. Need to see the creator. <laughs> you do. You need to see the remnants queen. I will see what I could do. I'm not going to run off and drag her up here, but if she happens to sneak down, yes, you can see the mixed, the remnants bags person herself. Oh, who has just bought back all of the kits for the applique samplers to go out next week. Fantastic. Uh, Joe's here too. Hello, I'm leaving work. Catch you soon before the rain. It is going to rain. Pat, virtual dinner, Rockford's Winery. I'm, I'm loving all of this. Let me, let me put the fruit salad down. You know I'm going to put a bit in my mouth. Hang on. Okay, so no dribble this evening because mum and dad are going to stay until after the show. Okay, so we're going to get some stuff done tonight and then Sunday morning for all of you that would like to chat everything beautiful and Benina 10 o'clock in the morning. A um, few things we're going to go through this week, including buttonholes, but we're not just going to use them for buttons. I'm going to do a couple of little tricks for you that I think you will like. We're going to use them for other things as well. So we'll do that. Um, Judith, how are things this evening in Yarram? 
you know, that's just one of those places on my hit list once we're allowed to travel to rural Victoria. Uh, Joy's here. Hello, Sue, again. Uh, Rhonda Berry, cheers. Rhonda, cheers, dears. I I'm going to tell you that it is diet ginger beer. You can make your own judgment. Oh, Chris, I'm glad you've got your order and you're happy. That's awesome. <laughs> You got your spritz organized, Yvonne. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So first of all, I have to apologize. I will come back and say hi to you all again later on. Flick, parcel arrived. I haven't, I've only opened it very recently before mum and dad got here. Thank you. Um, they are magnificent gerberas, aren't they? They are. Um, I, but I have to apologize to Jenny and to Michelle who we did pickups, drop-offs and things today for with machines and, and, and whatnot. I then came home and had a look at my face in the mirror and they had seen me absolutely, it, it was it was gardening look. It was horrendous. There was mascara from yesterday, the hair wasn't done. I went, oh my God. So I, I apologize. I looked like shag on a rock and I feel very, very bad about it. So I, I'm very, very sorry. You got the a la natural look. But, um, yes, don't you love my gerbers? Aren't they just, they're just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But now they're in the way. Hang on, we're going to move these as well. Okay. So, just, so we're going to split up tonight with Sunday morning. Sunday morning, you can watch it anytime on YouTube, sitting up in bed, having a cuppa. You'd be still in bed at 10 o'clock, whatever you want to do. But this evening, I wanted to go through a couple of things. Um just catch up on a couple of things, a couple of new things, and a little demo for you, and it's sort of, there's a there's a dual purpose for doing the demo, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm also doing it for Natasha in the UK, for the UK girls, because it's one of the techniques coming up in the next block of the Oriental Baltimore that they're doing in the but UK. But wait, what? Aha! <laughs> She did die here. She's, this is my mum. Look. Hi. See? Are you watching on television up there? Yeah. Moment? Okay. Robert said I better get my butt up here before <laughs> she starts. Because when she starts. Yeah. All right. So you were complaining. Which one did you like before you go? Which one? Mm, that one. See? She likes the one with the fabric I didn't design. Did you like Sorry that? Sorry about that. <laughs> so this one is yours. Yes. I'm not going anywhere. I don't need it. You don't need it? No. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Anything else you need on the wall? No, right now? Fine. And you sew a lot, don't you? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Off you go. Bye. That's mum. Um, so <laughs> she's gone again. So, yes, yeah, so that is the maker of all our beautiful kits, all of our small souvenir kits, remnants. That's her. She does all of that. In the background. <laughs> oh, hello, Elizabeth, and hello, UK. Naps girls are here. New to your page. Oh, Gail, you're new to the page. So one of Benina. Yeah, I know. They are really lovely. <laughs> okay. All right. Now you're all just getting silly. Oh, Tracy. So I've got a few from the UK because of the time difference. We'll have to remember that. We'll, we might have to do it more often, but not on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when um, Natasha's on, of course. But yeah, it's it's Friday evening here and I'm not frocked up. Mum actually complained, why haven't you got a frock on? And I went, well, it was just a name Cass and I came up with really quickly and I was thinking more about the cocktail than the frock. So I do apologise. We, uh, we will have a show on Cup Day though. So we might have to get a bit serious. Uh, UK ladies, this is Melbourne Cup. We have a public holiday for that day. And we, we, might, have to, we might have to get the old fascinator out for that one, do you think? I don't know. That's not tomorrow, so I don't have to think about it yet. Okay. So there's a few new fabrics. And as I said, I want to just do an extension of my ruching demo because it will be uh, relevant for Natasha and for the girls in the UK doing the Oriental Baltimore and for anyone else that is. And I'm actually going to use mine to embellish um, my felt basket, those lovely felt baskets we had last week, which we have two left of, but if they are sold out, please do not panic. I have ordered more and they will come back online uh, late next week. They'll be back. So, I wonder what I want to show you first. Oh, sorry. 
first of all, flashback, yes, I have homework to do. I haven't finished my cathedral ceiling block, table runners to go to Natasha, and I did a bit more this week, but because I'm making so many for her and me at the same time, they're taking a while. But I wanted to show you this. I think I mentioned to you that I did even a much smaller version of the eight-pointed Dresden that was hand-pieced, and you can see another of my brief pastel phases. Um, but this one is all hand-pieced, and I'll I'll measure this for you because if you have downloaded the pattern or you've bought the pattern, you can just shrink or increase the size of your templates. So these are three inches. They're three inches only. So if that gives you an idea, and this was lovely to piece by hand at this size. Uh, and, you know, you're not facing so many challenges as you are when you're sewing by machine. It's it's easier to stop at the quarter inch seam line. So I just thought I'd pop that up tonight for the want of something that matched the bags hanging either side. So that's up there. Um, I do want to talk about bags as well. But would you like to see, have a look at these. These are the new fabrics that came in today. And Steve and I got them all good to go. And now I'm going, which camera? Oh, I think we'll, I think we'll go overhead. That looks pretty flash. We'll go that way. There you go. So these are called Bubble Paisleys by Benetex. You know all of the amazing uh, cat fabrics and things that they do. So I don't get those in, but I do love the coordinates. And we've had different stories in these colors, in, in this sort of style and these Paisleys before. But aren't they? They, they're fun and they're vibrant and that is a true jet black in the background so you can see I, I just had to have them all so they're all here they're they're not a traditional paisley they are what I would call a modern retro paisley but how cool are those so you've got purple green orange blue and yummy blue teal and then all of those colors get wrapped up in this feature one so they're all now on the website. Steve has done a tag banner for tonight. Uh, and so they, if you hit the banner at the top of the website, it should, I'm pretty sure he did it before he left, uh, it should hit everything that we've uh, got up. So they are looking rather nice. And I think, um, I don't know, I've got so many things I want to do and stuff like this. But I do like the idea of using all of them as a medium coordinate and that's why I've done these packs so there is a pre-cut pack that's done with 25 centimeter lengths and then also you can buy them all individually on the website so they're rather gorgeous and it is metallic gold in there if you uh, if you want any advice on what they go with please don't hesitate to email me or if you order them or one of them or the pack in the comment section at the bottom, which all of you are starting to use, and that Steve made Steve and my life so cool and easy. Thank you very, very much, particularly when you were ordering the Be Mindful quilt. That made our lives so much easier. But if you want to know what goes with them, just order it and put in, hey, I've ordered this, but I would also like a coordinate to go with it. And we can go through that with you and we can adjust your order for you. So we're getting a little better all the time. I've just realized what goes with this. See, I would put my teal uh, flowering gum, the newest colour with that. That would work really well. There's Kaufman Fusions that will go with this. We've got Gorgeous Ochre Batiks that would go with that. This will go with Green Flowering Gum and Metallic Fusions from Robert Kaufman. Um, same with these. So there's lots, lots of possibilities. It's a nice little pack to have. And I think I put in the description... It's small enough to use actually for really funky applique petals or shapes or leaves, but it's also large enough to use as a coordinate, so the sizing on it is really, really good. Uh, and it's Benetix, it's beautiful quality. So, um, yeah, they're very... Who, I just want a bag in this. It's very, very nice. Very nice. Right, then the other thing, do you all remember what this month is? Ah, uh, my mother's sitting at the other end of my house. <laughs> so there's no lying about my very, very bad behaviour this week. This week is Breast Cancer Awareness Week. Sorry, month. It was month. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is where we're all supposed to be raising money 
and awareness for breast cancer research. But it's also time for us to all remember, you've been in lockdown, have you been? Have you been? And had your mammogram? Because I think a lot of us may have forgotten or have forgotten about it or have tried not to think about it that you need to go out and get that done. So I want you to all promise me if you are due or you're overdue that you will. I went this week. I was an absolute, I am just, I'm a mess. I am a mess always. I convinced myself from the time I know that it's time to do it, actually six months before leading up. And then I'm a wreck when I've booked it and I'm a basket case when I have it done. And then I'm just a complete nutter and not worth knowing from when you leave radiology and the doctor tells you that you are okay. But, but in the back of your mind, you have to remember all the time I think to myself, but this way I get to do something about it if there's a problem. And you must think like that. No more fear. You've got to go and do it. And every time I go, I then go, I will not do this again. I will front up and I will have no fear because it is what we need to do to make sure we keep ourselves safe. And you have to also remember, I'm lecturing you now, aren't I? You have to remember, we've all lost two years. So we all have to live at least two years longer to make it up. So please promise me that you will... If you are due, get it done. And I'm going to ring all my friends and make sure that they have as well. Now, in, uh, in recognition of that as well, we were going to do our blue pack next. No, we're not. Of our applique essentials. You were all asking for blue? No, I haven't done it. I've given you pink instead. Because this month is Breast Cancer Research and Awareness Month. And so we've done our pink pack and I've done dusky pinks. They're a bit yummy, aren't they? Actually, let's, let's, you know what happens? You should never give a girl too many cameras because then all she wants to do is play. Actually, that way's good. All I want to do is just play with them now. Okay, so we've got in this pack so many ways I could have gone. I could have gone hot pink, lolly pink, candy pink, apricot pink. I went dusky pink. We can always do another pink later. So you've got... Fairy Frost, Batik, Northcote Shimmer, Batik, that's that drop dead gorgeous dusky pink one they do, Shadow Play, a little bit of Under the Australian Sun for good measure, Robert Kaufman Fusions, do you remember we got that in the other week, that's that new uh, Victoria Batik that we got back in, so you're heading a bit duskier there, Liberty, oh yeah, in there, and then another Shadow Play down the end. So that is our new Essentials Pack. If you have uh, loved the other ones, then you're going to be able to add this into your collection. This is going to go with, I didn't get them all out tonight, um, it'll go with the light green one really, really nicely. I think that, that would be my top one that I would combine with this and probably the gold. The gold would go too, but really the light green is going to be really fresh and pretty. So what we're also doing with every one of these that we sell up until... I forget. I put a date on it. It's, it's on it. I think it's for this month. Of course it is. It's for this month. Every one of these packs that we sell, we're donating $5 to Breast Cancer Research on your behalf. So you know that when you're buying one, you are giving to that fantastic cause as well. Okay. So that is my pink pack. And that this is my pink pack because this is what I'm going to use to demo with. Um, speaking of pink as well, another just a little discovery that we made. I can't get this right. There we go. Another little discovery that we made is that um, we hadn't put the silver coin purse frames on the website. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what happened. Do you know how we keep finding things? So the gold's been up for ages, but not the silver. So this is, first of all, this is how this comes. Okay, so you've got the pattern in there and you've got your frame in the back and we've got them in gold and in silver. These, these are really nice, these latest ones that we've got. Look at the, the little, little knobs on the top that you open up and that's what you've got inside. So in recognition of that, just as a little special, and I think we set this up until midnight on Tuesday, if you purchase a silver one, I'm going to pop in for you the fabric with it. So you're going to get two squares of Melba pink fans and you're going to get two squares of the floral. And then all you will need to go with that is just 
couple of little bits of scrap batting or pallon or something that you've got to give it a little bit of a pad out. So I've put that in the text on there, so if you order one of those, you're going to get the fabrics with it to go with it. That's my apology that we missed it. And it was actually a customer that said, oh, there's no silver ones on the website. Oh, yes, there is. Yeah, there wasn't. So that's up. Um, and just a little bit of a touch base again too, because the other thing I knew we hadn't put up were all of our larger metal frames. So I think we did all of these on live shows early on, but they never made them onto the website. So um, I thought we'd better get our act together today. So these are our big ones. And look, these are beautifully, they are beautifully made. Um, they, let's just move the cocktail over that way. Can you see that? So they open all the way up, which I think is really important. I've seen some and you can't get them hinged. Because of the design, they don't open all the way up. So you can get them out flat, which makes it really nice and easy for quite, you know, it's quite a full-on task sewing them in, but you, it, it's well, well worth it. You've got the perforated holes all the way around, so you're, you're not going to be gluing in, you actually sew in. And one thing that I've seen a lot of girls do now, which I love, and it works really well, is they do a rough tack first. So... We use little bull clips, um, thumbtacks or whatever to, to, to hold it in place and then they do a tack this way over the frame and then it's positioned exactly where you want it without, you know, without spending too much time on it and then they come back and backstitch it through. So when you get to the inside of these, the part with the holes, just in case you haven't done them before, the part with the holes at the front is longer than the back so it means that you can easily get your needle in through here. Robert, what do you want about? Oh, you can't see. I've got the wrong camera on, that's why. I can hear them laughing at me at the other end. So, um, sorry, 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 let me go back. So when you open them out, they're whispering at me. Sorry, I had the wrong camera on and it's taken three people to tell me that now. Okay. So you've got, so the holes are here on the front, okay. But when you open up at the back, sorry girls, you've got, you can see that it actually sits down lower. So you're going to be able to get in there and actually back stitch them in. And you've got a really nice big ridge on there. So you can get um, a fair bit of batting up in there. So mine are actually made, whoops, with soft and stable. So if I pull this one down, this is the antique gold one. Oh, you know how sometimes you go, where did that yellow towel go? That's where it is. There you go. So you've got, this has got soft and stable in, which is the thickest batting that I use for bags, and it fits up into there perfectly fine. So it should be, should be good. You can see it's got a little wedge on the side. Now remember these two, these come with the pattern in the pack. So you've got all the instructions to make up one of those in here. There you go. And the picture on the front. And all the requirements. Um, 40 centimetres, half a metre of each fabric that goes with them. So you've got gunmetal grey. I'll pop that one back in there. And then you've got the silver. Have I got one? I've got one. No, I don't have one out. Grab the silver. So the silver is exactly the same as the uh, the coin purse. So you could do them as a pair. So that's the silver one. It's nice and shiny. And then you've got the antique gold that I showed you. So anyway, they are up on the website. They're twenty two fifty each. To me, I think that's. I remember what things like this used to be when they started coming in. Um, and I think it's. I think we've done pretty. I think we've done okay. It's not not bad if you compare it to a pair of handles or something like that. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, the other thing too. Just to remind you, we've got tagged tonight, or we've got all of the. You've got little purses as well, and these are trinkets. We call these trinket purses. So they're a little bit smaller than. There you go. Than the coin purse. So, who's did I see recently? Oh, yes, Michelle did. Michelle Fisher 
did a little one of these to go with her Madison set that we're getting ready as a pattern for you. So um, you can see that's the difference there. They come in four colours. You've got antique gold, gunmetal, silver, and shiny gold. There you go. I have another one. They're breeding. I've got more. I don't know what happened. These are the ones I did for the photo shoot though. <laughs> so, um, so you've got four different ones. So you can buy them separately, but there's also a value pack where you get one of each. I just think it's getting, it's getting towards the Christmas bit. This comes with the pattern. You need little bits of fabric. They don't take long to make, so I think they would be a really nice prezi to make. And the thing I didn't mention, sorry, sorry. sorry. With, with the trinket, the pattern comes with two shapes. So you've got, there you go. So you've actually got this one I've just shown you, and then you've got a long one. And I found, <gasps> found in a basket a whole heap that have been made up ready to sew into the frame. So you can have that shape, or you can have that shape, and they will both fit. See how it looks wider? See that? It's wider than the frame. That's the little bit of magic that happens to give you the a little bit more body and shape at the top. They need to be just that little bit wider so when you pull them in, you've got width inside the purse. Right, so that's all of those. Now what I wanted to do, oh, coming up Tuesday, I'll show you Tuesday, I'll show you Tuesday. We've put the cat charms up, but we're just going to come back. We've got some really nice little kits and special offers on our little uh, charm purses, but we've got our little happy cat charms instead. So that will be Tuesday. And what's the other good thing about Tuesday? What's the cool thing about Tuesday? Can't wait for Tuesday. Emma's back. Em will be in on Tuesday, which will be lovely. Lovely to see her. Um, Pauline Boyke's here. Pat, are you packing, Pat? This is the question. You should be packing while watching. Um, oh, Glenda, hello. Kathy, how are things with you? Oh, Kathy Hearn says, hello, Lisa and everyone. Sylvia, okay, good, good, good. All right. Oh, yeah, Bernadette. Bernadette said on the phone, I'm sorry, I'm going to be late. And I said we'd give her a really hard time when she finally arrived, but, but we won't. We won't do that to her. Okay, so what I want to talk about this evening is just how to take your ruching to the next level just a little bit. And we're going to do a bit of pre-piecing before we ruche. So I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, can we pull? So I'm going to take out of this pack to do it. I want three out of here. And I'm very happy about using the pinks because they're going to go onto my felt basket. So, you know, along with the other 50 things I'm going to do this weekend before I see you on Tuesday with Emma. Oh, if Em's here, I'm going to have to really make an effort because she's been working on wonderful things for us too. Three colours that are that have got a fair bit of a fair bit of difference and interest going on. So we'll definitely put in under the Australian sun because then we get the gold for the contrast. And I think we might we might use the Liberty. I think we will. They will all go. That's the whole thing. It doesn't 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 really matter. No, maybe that one. Let's have a look. That's not bad. That's going to work. But will it show you what I'm trying to demonstrate? No. Okay. We're going to take that out. We're going to run those three. So some of the things that I've done before, I just wanted to show you in terms of using what we've got here, at, you know, in hand. And that is... When you ruche, we're cutting across a fabric, but it doesn't all have to be the same fabric. It can be pre-pieced with three or four or more fabrics. So I'm going to chop these down just on the fold. And then uh, if I was you and you had one of these packs, you would just go and safely put that whole piece away and that's going to get used another day for applique flowers. 
pop that one over there. I think that's I think that's the level that's the really fun thing for me at the moment is actually being able to put together these packs. It's a little bit of it's a little bit of colour therapy. So when I was supposed to be doing other things this morning, I just stopped and went and picked my pinks. So I've got one, two, three. I want to be able to ruche these up when they're pieced. So I want I want to be able to get quite a bit of a variation happening, but you don't want too much of the one colour. So I'm going to cut these down and join them together. Now they are four inches of course across, they're ten centimetres. So I'm actually going to cut them down. Quite a decadent thing to do with a brand new pack of pre-cuts. But I want you to also think about doing it perhaps with a whole heap of those little strips that you've got left over and you look at them and go, I could become one of those people that, that, that paper pieces half inch hexagons. Is Cass watching? I don't know because I'm just really saying that. So <laughs> because she does um, or can I do something else with them so it's just another idea for that now if I cut these down so they're too wide they're only going to be when they're finished one and a half or I might make mine just a little bit bigger so they come down to two because when I ruche when I actually ruche up they're going to be you, you lose lose about half so I'll cut this down. Um, I'm not stressed over having pieces that are one inch wide left over. They would, they will get used. These sorts of things as well are great to keep for, for, for binding and a straight bias and all different sorts of things and, and half inch hexagons. So, all right, so they're cut down. Now, if you have a think as well, you... If we're going to join all of these together, you're only going to get a piece to ruche or a bias piece to cut that's that big. Actually, it's going to be smaller, isn't it? Because we're going to take the seam allowance off. It's not much. So I'm actually going to cut these in half again so that when I piece them all together, I'm going to get close to having, you know, a fat rectangle or a square. So I'll get to this point. We're out to 22 here. So if I come in about 11, there. One, two, three. That, when it's sewn together, is going to be much better to get a really nice ruche across. Now, of course, if you do this, if you have a go at this sort of thing, I want you just pull out all your scraps, have a little bit of a play, put all of your pinks together or your reds together or, or some or oranges, whatever you want to do, um, because it, it will take a little bit of fabric, but that's why it's one of those great things to do with what you've got left over. Let's move the ginger beer that may or may not have tequila in it. I'm not saying anything, but it would probably be much more sensible if it didn't because I'm about to operate a sewing machine. Now, I was speaking to, who was I speaking to today? Miss Jenny. Miss Jenny was talking today and she said a very, very nice thing. She said, well, first of all, she said the, the, the shock horror thing. She doesn't own a banana. But she also said she does own a husbana. And uh, it was still really handy to watch because it made her go and read her manual as we had all talked about. So that's super. So if you um, do want to tune in on Sunday morning, have your book <laughs> ready, have your manual ready with the section on uh, buttonholes. And I'm going to make, well, I'm not going to make, I'm going to hope that at least uh, Deb Burt, Josie and Ruth are watching because... <laughs> Um, they came to one of the first uh, get to know your banana classes that I ran and we did buttonholes but the teacher didn't understand 
the buttonhole uh, system well enough. And there was a little thing that happened that um, was very interesting because they're sensor driven. So when we uh, were making this little project, the project did not sit flat on the sewing bed and therefore the sensors got upset and we, we had a few little we had a few little issues with some of the machines and it was completely my fault. So a lot was learnt and we're gonna go through that again. Do it better. I can hear someone. We can't see that. I know. So now I'm gonna just I'm just threading up this machine and then I will give you a look at what I'm doing. Okay, so that's done. Okay, now just move these across before we do the camera angle so you can see. There we are. Okay, so I've threaded up. Um I've just, I've noticed, I've still got my applique foot on here from when we were doing applique, but that's alright. It's a great foot. Have you all had a good look at the feet, your feet lately? Not, not the feet that need a pedicure on the end of your legs, I mean the feet on your machine. Because I suppose that's one of the other things, isn't it? You can get to know your machine really well. But, do you know your feet really well? So remember what I said to you the other day? get your feet out and actually uh, see what they do and have a look underneath because the underneath of the foot is really important as well how it feeds through the machine how it's picking the fabric up how it's dealing with the thread it makes a huge difference particularly even more so with your dual feet all right so we just want to sew these all together Them, you can chain sew them together. Hang on, what are you saying? You put me onto a lace of Ah, that's funny. Okay. Yeah, you do watch the same things. I've, I've watched you two. You do, and I missed. I missed Natasha this week, Sylvia. We were just a little bit busy and we, we missed it. Actually, you know what had happened? My excuse is um, daylight saving here in, here in Melbourne. We were still outside at 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, and uh, Dad had given me some tomatoes and so I was out planting. And everything now has taken off in the garden. Jenny Sleeman, how are you? All right, two, two, two rows to go. So this is super quick. And it, look, it, it doesn't have to be accurate and it doesn't have to be straight. If you um, if you've got different textured fabrics, just just be really careful as well though, because you you'll find it's going to be hard to actually gather them. So if you're using your scraps, just make sure all your fabrics are pretty much the same the same weight. Like I wouldn't mix. Um, I wouldn't mix cottons with linens, with drill. I, I would keep them all pretty much the same. One. There we go. Uh, 
it's quite it's actually quite insulting to this machine to um just you know put it on camera and just do a straight stitch because we are going to do way more than that on Sunday. So if I just turn this around, there you go. So if you have a look here, where we're going to play on Sunday, let's go back to the main menu. Is so we're in here and we're actually what am I on? 475. Shut that down, Lisa. There we go. Alright, so we're going to come in here on Sunday, we're going to play in here, so not straight stitches, not decorative, not alphabet, we're going to come in here into your buttonholes. So just get yourself familiar with this before Sunday, find your buttonhole foot, really, really important. So if you remember last week we played with the eyelets, so we're going to come back in here and we're going to have a little bit of a play and talk about customising your buttonholes, but also using them for other things, because not... Not all of us are seamstresses, not all of us make clothes, but there's lots of other things that we can use them for. So that's what we'll do Sunday morning before you all run off and do whatever it is that you can now do depending on where you are. Quite funny really. Where did I go today? Alright, now we'll get our cotton ready. And, okay, so we'll come in here. All right, so this is my pre-piece bit to cut my ruching from now. So it needs a little bit of love and a little bit of an iron. So I'll just grab this out, set this up. Actually, while I do this, let's talk about the other things. Um, ombres, so it's... You know, ruching is just, you know I, I love doing it, but they just keep finding lots and lots of different things. Ombres are a fantastic medium to use when you're ruching, so just remember that as well. And you don't, like I've done, we've done this, mixing all the colours up. But of course you can also ruche just with two colours. So the best example to do that with is a fat piece of pale purple and a dark piece of of sorry, a narrow piece of dark purple at the top, so that when you cut it and you ruche it, you will get lavender. You will get French lavender. And somewhere in this house is uh, the Christmas decorations that Emma and I made that have got a uh, ruched uh, ombre. So, I don't know where they've ended up. We'll have to find those before our Christmas week. Don't forget to get your Christmas decorations ready for me as well, please, so that we can get that tree decorated. I know I've got a few to pick up, and I know that some are being posted in, which is fantastic. Hello, Bev. Hello, Marie. Oh, um, overseas as well. If you want to do a little bit of a search for the Spanish Patchwork Association, uh, and in particular the Madrid Patchwork Show, it is on at the moment. It is happening and it's just it, it just makes me so excited that Spain have got to the point where they have a show on and it's busy. There's girls there and there's lots of stands. I'm excited and I'm scared all at the one time. But if you want to have a look, they're showing all the stands and they're showing the prize winners at the moment. Um, it's Most of it's in Spanish but you can still have a really good look at the quilts and the stands and things. And of course you all know I've got, you know Maria is there from um, uh, from Phil de Fada and she's got a whole stand of my stuff there and she sends me photos and it's just so surreal that it's all there and it's, um, it's in Spain, it's in Spain. Okay. I have my mock-up piece of um, fabric. That's uh, that's pretty wonky, folks. Look at that. Very, very wonky. So we want to be able to cut our pieces on the diagonal. Now, you know what I usually do, don't you? I usually go this way. So instead of standing this way, and remember, I'm a left-handed. So if I'm left-handed, I would cut this way. And right-handed, I would cut this way or I could cut this way but 
I do this, I turn this way and then I fold because it's just easier and you need a small ruler. I can steady it better. Um, we're going to cut with a with a classic two inch ruche. So for our benefit now I'm going to cut the longest kind of bit that I can to show you and then I'm going to do a smaller piece. So I suppose we are um, we're going to ruche it, but at the same time, well, we could probably use that for quite a few different things. Use it for curved binding, lots of different things. Um, and if you think art quilts, or if you think sort of more abstract quilts, and you think about getting all of your greeny tanny cream torpy batiks together that are left over and use those you could be doing this this actual method and creating your own bias strips to use for stems as well so it's a technique it's a really quick easy technique that you'd be able to use for lots of different things um i'm gonna move across so now what we want to do is actually iron these into the middle so that we can ruche them. So if I pop him back up on here. Uh, again, I'm not going to worry too much about him putting it in the center, but I will say because of all of the seams, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to pop it through a bias maker. And I know you're gonna go, oh, but it, it's just not going to behave really well for you because of those seams, they're going to catch. I sometimes I will open them up but it really hasn't been that much of an advantage in fact it starts to unravel a little bit if you do I'm getting a nice facial here Hey, there was a bit of a panic again mum sitting up the other end oh heavens there was a bit of a panic i um i couldn't find the christmas pudding recipe i found it but there was, <laughs> there was a little bit of a oh no because i promised i'd put it on a quilter's life so um i found it and it and it will happen i've sent it through to cast so she can make it all look beautiful because it's on a page that's covered in splatters of probably milk and butter and all sorts of things. So that will be up uh, this week on A Quilter's Life. And I hope you all saw that we've put up the studio bag pattern and also um, Cass has popped up some, some little tips on using A Quilter's Life now because they have changed the layout of how it all works and a few people are going I can't see anything it's all there but what you need to do is tag it anyway if you are a member please um please have a look because it's all it's all there for you and sorted out and the studio bag is there from Tuesday and the Christmas pudding recipe will be there very very shortly I'm just going to thread this up so you can see what I've done instead of Looking at different prints or, or you know that you can use, you can actually create your own bias and it's really easy to make and use. Um, and I need okay. I was organized a grey lid. So because I cut this at two inches and I've folded them both in, it's now an inch. It's an inch wide. So I'm going to come through and mark it at one inch intervals. It's entirely up to you how wide you want them but the classic thing is if it's one inch wide you do one if it's half an inch wide you do half that will give you a classic even ruche but then you can mess around with it so if you are doing um, the Oriental Baltimore UK ladies with Natasha this method's being used for your chrysanthemum block and that's the one that I'm sending through to Natasha for next month 
So uh, you've just done your iris block and now you'll be on to chrysanthemums next. Um, not really nice strong thread for me please. Not something that's been in a sewing box forever. It needs to be a really nice strong cotton. And in fact, if, you, um, if you've got some hand quilting thread that's in a good colour, that will work too. Which what wear, Diane? Can I have a lesson on... Oh, yeah, sure. Diane wants to swatch me do my thread. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's do the, the close-up here for you. So I'm just remember I'm left-handed as well, Lily Duca. So if I put my thread underneath my needle, it's under my needle there, die like that. I'm a bit challenged here because I'm trying to get close up for you, but I can't see my screen. There we go. So the thread is sitting underneath the needle on my finger, and then I wrap one, two, three, four. I'm a four girl. You can be anything you like. You wrapped around four times. And then you hold those those winds on the needle between your fingers. And the magic just happens. And then I pull the needle through. And there's a knot. I don't understand how it got there, die, but that's the way it works. And you can go over the same spot again. So I'll now hold it with the knot on the other side of the needle. Like that. There's another one. I don't know. Uh, but I don't understand. Some people sit and they they do this. They roll it between their fingers. I don't understand what that does either. But just a little bit of magic. Okay. So now we're going to zigzag, rush this, gather it up together. I know a lot of you have seen this done before, but I just thought it would be really fun to do with these pinks tonight. Uh, start on one side and your stitches need to be about a quarter of an inch apart. You don't want really thin ones or it won't gather up nice and tight. Yeah, give it another go, Diane. Give it another go. It is, if you can persevere... It's, it's a really fun technique. So I'm just going back and forth across my marks. So I'm just going to zigzag gather across. But one little trick to get a really good one is to, nice and tight, is to finish short of the fold and then bring your thread up and over. So I stop just underneath, not on the fold, and then I come back in on the top. And then when I go across... I actually will end up with a loop of fabric that goes over the edge. Actually, while I've got you all here, can I just say a little bit of housekeeping as well? Um, because the chicken happened before the egg. The, ch the chicken happened before the egg. Um, Steve. Uh, we worked out how to set up for those that were coming to our Creative Escape Retreat last year who have a tab um, that chose to keep a tab with Chandler's Cottage and get the benefits and the discounts with a tab. And we just decided that as we're not going to be uh, open, officially open again before Christmas, that we should do the right thing and reconcile and just make sure everyone knows what they've got available. So Steve set up this cool thing on the website where he just gave you a codes for a, a gift voucher for how much you had as a deposit and then um, another one to get you 25% discount. And he set it up but of course in setting it up they went out. So if you find a weird and wonderful email from us saying you've got a gift voucher it's actually your tab from the Creative Escape and the official letter telling you that will probably be out tomorrow. So uh, if you see that come through, that's what that is. Uh, but, you know, we we had, I'm just saying, looking at people that were coming, it's Karen to, Sharon says, yeah, thanks for my gift voucher. It's your money back, Sharon, that we're holding for you. 
But we just um, we just don't we can't see the forest for the trees yet in terms of running a retreat. Uh, I think most of those that were coming know that we still have Cindy was coming with Lynn. Um, uh, we just can't see past it at the moment. We we still have a very large deposit sitting at the venue. Um, not quite sure what that will ever get used for. I got really excited and just thought, yeah, let's all just blow it for the weekend. But it doesn't work like that. I've read the fine print. But yeah, we'll we'll see. We can we can talk about that maybe about halfway through the year we'll we'll have a chat about it again. We'll just see how things are going. But it is very exciting here in Melbourne today for those that hadn't seen family for a while. So um, I'm assuming the roads are going to be manic, absolutely manic for the weekend. I just want to give you a little look and see how I'm going. You can see down there, so you can see that starting to ruche up and I'm getting all of the colours compacted down so that they all sit nicely together and then the, what's going to happen is when I am um, nearly there, I'm nearly there, get it all gathered up, then we'll be able to turn it around into a circle and get a pretty flower. So I'm planning on popping mine on, this is one side of my uh, basket, so the felt baskets that we had last week, if you, I should just show you, if you didn't see these, these are, oh my handles are not here, oh yes they are, they're over there. So this folds out into a big felt basket and we're using these as a great medium to just to have a little bit of a play and try things out and, and decorate, have just a little bit of artistic fun. So this is what I did on mine last week. And just get across here. Um, so if you look at this as well, you can now see that if I had used a purple, but then just had a little bit of the a dark purple at the tip, I would be able to stop about here and get beautiful lavender flowers out of it. And it also, it's also really good for wheat. You can use it for wheat. Um, we used it on the applique sampler for heliochrisms or paper daisies. And we're going to be ruching waratah heads as well. Not this month coming but probably the month after. Can you see that? So it's just slowly compacting down. If you were to just use a uh, thin strips of, for example, a white and a hot pink, you would get sim carnations. Oh, I have to tell you, for those here comes the Ginny. For those that were watching on Tuesday and uh, watched me wrestle with a cat that just decided to have a massive stress attack, um, don't work with animals or children, we worked out what it was. And it was Miss Ginny. And I had those big tube, the, the long uh, rolls of linen up. What it was, girls, <laughs> was... As I was talking, because I had them on an angle, uh, I was using them like a megaphone. And the um, my voice was coming out, projected out the end of the tubes, down the end of the table, and probably sounded very different to what her mother usually sounds like. That was the problem. And she would not come back in this room. And then I moved them out into the shop today on a shelf. Uh, nope, nope, not going near those. So that's what it was. It was my voice, like a megaphone, down through the, down through it. Um, yes. But yeah, the linen, it's, you could do this with linen, but you wouldn't mix your linen with cotton. It would just be too hard. I'm, I'm going to stop here because I've probably got another couple of minutes to go and I really... 
want to show you what happens. So if I stop there, so you've got that much, and I'm going to clip this bit off. Okay, so that's where I'm at. So now I've got my little multicolored pink ruche, and then I want to be able to fold all this up like that. So I've got all my different colors together. The easiest way to sew this, if I want to sew this onto my bag, the easiest way to do it is not straight through, but just to grab a scrap. No, because we don't have a scrap, do we? I'll have to use the good stuff. I just want a little square to use as a base. So if I start in the center, I think the cutest thing I've ever seen ruching used, used for uh, was a frill around the neck of a clown. It was a little cute little kid's quilt that was applique and he had his little clown frill done with ruching and it was gorgeous. So it wasn't even being used for flowers at all. Oh, remember those those multicolored um, well they were like an ombre weren't they those multicolored ones that we got in last week so we had the autumn ones remember and then we got the psychedelic pretty colored ones <gasps> that would look amazing ruched I actually think you just do a big ruch and turn it into a hungry caterpillar there we go so of course you can add as many colors and strips and things as you want um, and as I said though don't don't make the strips too big take the time to cut them cut them narrower I've got a fair bit of the same color ending up here together but it's only because I've done the shortcut and decided to do a smaller piece that's all together now what we the last thing that we really want to do with this is just tuck all of the ends under so if they're sitting like that I actually want to get these bits around the edge up and underneath now these this serves a purpose this uh, of course disguises that we've got that little base underneath but it also helps pad out the underneath of the flower so when you when you actually do this and you've got much bigger flowers you're really going to see the impact of popping that extra fabric up underneath and you you look you can even um, add in a little bit of pallet underneath there as well if you want to the great thing about using a scrap fabric as well um, underneath is if you use one that's nearly the same color as what you're working with on the top if there are any little gaps they're going to be completely disguised underneath. There you go. It's done. So I can now actually pop this onto my bag, I think, and maybe make a few more. How many stitches do you go across on the diagonal? Why do you even want to know that, Robert? Someone asked? Yes. Oh, well, I haven't looked at my messages yet because my phone was going flat. That's why. Thank you, Miss Joan. How many stitches across? Oh, okay. It's not about how many stitches across. It's actually about ma not making them too small. So, which, that's not helping, is it? But I want you to keep them out to about a quarter of an inch. I don't want them really small. So if you go too small, you won't get a gather in. So across an inch for me, I probably do three. Three across. One, two, three, four. That's all. 
so you don't want you don't want really really fine ones. Same thing as when we make Suffolk puffs. If, you, if the center is too, if your stitches are too small, you won't get it to pull in and pleat really nicely in the middle. I'm I'm quite happy with that. What do you think? Shall it go on the basket? This is the question. I think it will. I think it will go on. And then see, this was that super gorgeous um, magenta pink Northcote that we used last week. This is a little bit more dusky, but I have a feeling if I sneak a little bit more, if I sneak a bit of this in with my other strips and a couple more that I think um, then I think will be good. Oh my God, I've just been butted by a cat. Okay, so hopefully I will inspire you to get going with your baskets. And if you haven't got one, there's a couple left and we'll get some more next week. And uh, yeah, please have a look at all of the bag. See, now that I've done, look, look, look. Now I've done this. That's what the, the other ones look like. Hang on. Now I've done this. That's what the other ones look like. Okay, so if I get this bag. We sit this down here like that. Just hold that on there. So this, I love these bags because you've got all this really cool detail and everything going on up the top of the frame, but then this is a complete blank canvas. So you you really can use it. You know, we talked about this when we when we did the, um, the studio bag and stuff. This is a blank canvas for you to create something. You've got the framework and the basic pattern and this it's always going to look gorgeous because of these beautiful frames with this one or these bigger ones. But this is where you can just use a plain fabric and use this like as a little canvas, a little picture to create with things like ruching and applique and bias work and stitcheries. And remember we've got the beautiful one too on the website still with Margaret with Margaret's with the candle wicking with the wattle as well. So think of them they're not like my complicated bags or ones you buy that have got heaps of zips and pockets and piecing and all sorts of things happening on. They're just a simple classic design with a really cool handle and then you can come back and add your own stuff. Add your own stuff onto them. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth. Thank you. Oh, what's that, Joan? You love ruching. Oh. Um, yeah, Flick, I need, I need to make more. I never, I never complain if I have to do more ruching, though, because I really do enjoy it. Uh, but, yes. Now, what is up in the corner quilt? Ah, oh, Carol, you have spotted it. Well, it didn't fit on the stand, which is why you got the little one. Up in the corner, I'll quickly show you this, and then we all we, we should all chuff, shouldn't we? Um, I don't know which way up. This is one of my Melbourne quilts, but Melbourne Magic? Yeah, Melbourne Magic. Yeah, I think it is Melbourne Magic. But this was the original that was done in uh, in the Nouveau. So this is on the website as a pattern and a kit, but it's actually done in the black and orange. This was kind of the prototype. The prototype never made it off the ground. It took a long time, the prototype, because it used too much fabric. Um, I had to use, I don't know, eight meters to create this with the fussy cutting. So I changed it around. I mean, you could still do it, but I changed it around. But yes. And it looks, see how it's a weird shape? I never mounted it onto a square background. So it's actually uh, bound on the with binding on the bias to go right round but it makes a really nice bed topper so if you've got a plain um, uh, you know bedspread or doona over the top it looks really nice just sitting on the top so that's what that is all right everybody I think uh, I think that's it for me this evening I'm gonna go deal with the other three sitting up the other end of the house I'm gonna go finish my fruit salad I'm going to drink my cocktail with or without the addition of something naughty in it 
Um, and for those that want to catch up with me, I will see you on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And if not, that's perfectly fine. And I look forward to seeing you here with Emma, with a cup of tea. Shall we make it High Tea Tuesday? Let's make it High Tea Tuesday. Let's bring it back. So we'll be back with High Tea Tuesday with Em uh, at uh, 2 o'clock on Tuesday. All right. Have a fabulous weekend, won't you? I'm going to grab my drink. And I'm going to grab my laptop. And go and see what they're all up to. And I'll see you later. Bye.